I have my Daytona 500 cup and NASCAR in the background. That can only mean one thing. We go on NASCAR racing at 10 in the morning, boys. Woo! Oh boy, it's mostly dry for now. I'm excited. We are about to go green in the final race of the NASCAR regular season here at Daytona. It's 10 a.m. The crowd is, actually there's a lot of people in the crowd, Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing in the bright and early morning, boys! Kyle Larson taking the early lead from Chase Elliott. Drafting is going to be crucial here at Daytona. Not only normally at Daytona, but especially in these next-gen cars. You're going to try to want to stick to one, in one another as long as you can. I don't know if I got it just in time, but you can see the hood flaps on the car. Raising up a little bit. That's how much air is important here. Air, aerodynamics, drafting, all of that is really important here at Daytona. Kyle Busch, he had his hand out the window. He's, he's going to fall back. He's trying not to get caught up in the big one if we do have an early big one. Or if rain happens and NASCAR doesn't call a caution like they did at New Hampshire. Yes, I'm still angry about that. No, I will never get over it. Even though it happened a year ago. But here we are. Oh, 99 Swar is giving a bump to the five. The five getting a little loosey goosey with it. You see the hood flaps flapping up. All the air getting into all the small crevices of these cars. This is why drafting is important. This is why you want to have the most aerodynamic car. This is why you want to have the most slick car. Is so that way you can stay in the draft and be fast throughout this track. 38, 23. And the 48 had a run on the high line. We're going up to three different lanes now. I saw a few cars go into the middle there. Oh, those clouds don't look very nice. So the 48 is trying to side draft off of the current car we're riding on, which is the 12 of Ryan Blaney. And the two car in front. Are we going to see manufacturers try to team up with the manufacturers? Well, we'll find that out as the race goes on. NASCAR Drive. If you're a hardcore NASCAR fan like I am, I definitely suggest using that. I'm actually using it. Uh, issues for the five car. Getting a little too hot. Water temperature going up. The five car is slowing down. Oh, smoke. The five car. Little bit of smoke coming out of the car. That is not good. Five cars slowly, slowly yet surely making its way down pit road. Two car was trying. Breaking. Five car will head off to the garage. Vengeance issues. Whether or not he'll be able to race, the chances are very slim. I do not think the five car will be able to continue on today. Thankfully, he's he's definitely locked into the playoffs, so all you Kyle Larson fans, do not worry whatsoever. But he will not be racing anymore today. Here we go. Big push by the 20 car. Oh, that got the 22 a little loose. That, has, that gave the 9 a little bit of lead, but that little bit of lead's not going to last long because there's a whole pack of cars behind that 9 car. There's the 43 of Eric Jones. Never count out Eric Jones when it comes to super speedway races. Using the power of Denny Hamlin, he's going to get past the 9 of Chase Elliott, and he is going to lead. The commentators literally just asked if, uh, if it was interesting that Chase didn't go out and block. No, it's too early for that. We're only in lap 21. Gee whiz. The 43 of Eric Jones getting real far, but Joe Lugano. So, uh, you know what happened when Kyle Larson had engine problems and the two cars right behind him and he was trying to help him and then, like, the five had a problem and so the two was way behind the field, isn't caught up in the draft, blah 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 Yeah, guess what big pack of cars is slowly yet surely catching up to that two car? I shouldn't say slowly, they're going about 200 miles per hour. Speaking of, there he is. We're going to go three wide, uh, 48 of Alex Bowman out of the line. He's going to slowly yet surely go back. He's going to get caught up behind the two. There's the two car. And there goes the two car. They have less cars, so they're going all the way to the back. Maybe that's what the 48 wanted. Who knows? Trying to avoid a wreck. We're going too wide. This looks exactly like how we started the race. Oh, 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 the 11, the 20, the 12. They all go around. Huge wreck. 
It's the big one! Maybe! Oh, the 20 in front of the 19! Damage to the 12 of Ryan Blaney. He needed to get into the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. is not damaged. He almost got damaged. Holy moly, what the heck just happened? That is a lot of damage for the 12. The wheel is sideways. You see that orange line there? That's supposed to be in the center when you're not going into a corner. That is all the way to the right. That tire is sliding. It's stuck. It's damaged. What happened? The 43 got a little loose. Got bumped by the 11 and just around everyone went. Bam. Boom. Bam. That's the... Uh, uh, I think that was a 41 car. Holy cow. Only time and tire damage on the 19, so that's good for Martin Jurex Jr., but not very good for Ryan Blaney. Two to go in stage one. I don't think we're going to get back to going green, but I'll keep you guys updated. Here's everyone involved in the wreck. One lap shootout. Hey, where the heck does Kyle Busch come from? Back going green. Chase Elliott is currently leading. Will he stay that way by the end of this lap? It's a one lap shootout for stage number one. Joe Logano getting a push by Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. needs these playoff points to get past Ryan Blaney. 22 up front. Is he going to get left to dry? No, he's going to go down low. Block the inside lane that's going a bit faster than the outside lane. It's going to hold up the inside lane just a smidge, but not too much. Chase Elliott heavily pushing the 22. Chase Elliott going up high, trying to make a pass on the 22. The 21, Harrison Burton going down low. He flipped into Daytona 500. Side by side. It's going to be a drag race coming to the start finish line through the small straightaway, through the D-shaped oval, right in the middle. It's going to be Joey Logano. Joey Logano wins stage number one. Green flag pit, or not green flag, sorry. Stage one pit stops. These are the only five drivers that are going to make it. Oh, there's more. There's more. There's more. But holy cow, can we take a quick second? So as I ended the recording that showed everyone else uh, who finished the stage, Corey LaJoy finished seventh. This makes Daytona a great equalizer. It brings the small teams up front. It brings the big teams to the back, to the front, to everywhere. And this is why Daytona is pretty awesome. So these guys getting fuel and tires. Not a, very, not a lot of uh, cars making a pit stop today. Or right now, I should say. Here's a race off pit road. It's about 10 drivers. I mean, there might be more in there. just not showing it, but still. So we'll see how that plays off. Or how that plays out in strategy later today. And we're underway here at stage two. The very beginning, I was afraid I was going to lose it because I accidentally clicked something. Is that Corey LaJoy leading? That is Corey LaJoy leading. And Bubba Wallace in second. Now in first. Holy cow. Look at that. And I'm going to be right back. I want this full screen. All right. Cool, cool, cool. We're cool. We're cool. I almost missed the start because I accidentally clicked on something. But we're all good. We're good. We're good. Three wide. Going to the back. 23 and the 7, no longer the 7, 23 and the 43. He was kind of sort of caught up in the early, in the uh, first track of the race. The clouds are looking a lot better than they were earlier. And the competition up front is huge. 23, the 43, the 34, and the 7. Cars you don't see in the front regularly. Currently in lead, the 17 of Christopher Busher. You normally don't see him up front every day. 23 going down low to block that 43 with the faster advancing line than the center line. Okay, so the 10 car in front of the 99, he's right there, has pulled a Tom Brady, if you guys didn't know. He's decided to unretire, and he'll be driving the 10 car next year. I believe he'll still be the Smithfield car, but he will be racing in that number 10 Ford Mustang next season. Now, if only Mars could do that with Kyle Busch right here that would be fantastic he would get a ride back at joe gibbs racing and me as a kyle bush fan wouldn't have to worry where he's going next season if he's even gonna get a ride next season so mars if you could do that if you could pull a tom brady and an eric Almirola, that would be great uh nothing sounds better than hearing the of the cars going across the camera ready man i love that sound makes me think of speed Power, and of course, Daytona. By the way, William Byron pulled out to the lead. Where'd he come from? 
I have no idea. William Byron, Alex Bowman, the two quote-unquote back of the pack of uh, Hendrick Motorsports. They have not won a lot of races this season, but they are currently up front here at Daytona. Eric Jones, William Byron, Alex Bowman, Chris Buescher, Denny Hamlin, Corey LaJoy. I don't know how he's up there, but he's up there. Joe Logano, Todd Gilwin somehow in the 38, Harrison Burton somehow, and Eric Amaral all in the top 10. This is why I love Daytona. You never know who's going to be up front. It could be a normal up front person, or it can be some back of the pack person. This is why Daytona is pretty awesome. Hamlin now up front. Joey Logano now in second. Harrison Burton in third. Where did the 43, the 24, and the 48 go? Not in the top 10, I'll tell you that much. We went to commercial break and they just disappeared. I don't know where they went. I don't know where they're going. But they are not in the top 10. Oh, 48's in the top 10. But I, I don't know what happened. We probably shouldn't have gone to commercial break there, I guess. Or you should have gone side by side or something. Maybe they did. I don't know. NBC Sports app didn't show anything. Oh, here you are. Here's what happened. 17 just went really down low. Something started getting kind of crazy up there and everyone just kind of sort of fell back since then there was a better view of it but the last time i tried to go back on nbc sports it made me watch an ad and i don't really feel like missing the race um but yeah so that's that's how denny hamlin was leading would have been great if we didn't go to commercial to see that but you know it's whatever i guess what green flag pit stops the 11 the 18 the 23, the 19, the Team Toyota, all going down pit road, except Ty Gibbs. Because Ty Gibbs marches by the beat of his own drum. Well, that's not important. Looks like it's just going to be fuel only for the Team Toyotas. The 18 goes. The 11 goes. 19 goes. And where's that 23? And there goes the 23. All four of five Toyota cars make their stops, and away they go. Wait, there's six Toyota cars. Ah, uh, the 20 car is also missing from that Toyota pit stop. But other than that, who's next? The Chevys? The Fords? And Toyota's going to have to try to gang up together to pass the... Or to not go a lap down against these Chevys and Fords who have a lot bigger of a lead. Or, sorry, have a lot bigger of a pack. Therefore, they're going to be able to go a lot faster than this small group of Toyotas. There's the group of Toyotas. There's the group of the Fords and Chevys. And they're coming fast. Here's the Fords and Chevys and all the eight of Tyler Reddick squealing down pit road, locking up the brakes, trying to make it. Here's a huge group. Holy cow, look at that group of Chevys and Fords and they're all going in. It looks like they're gonna get a... Joe Gunner's got in a two-tire pit stop. Are we gonna get a two-tire pit stop and fuel? Holy cow, we almost got a huge wreck there. Uh, it looks like right sides and fuel for the Chevys and Fords. And off they all go. Somehow not right. I think there was some contact in the back there. And they're all going to team up together. And away they go. There's Team Toyota. Oh boy, we are going to get a wreck here. We are so going to get a wreck here. The 8 car, flat spotted his tires coming on the pit road as you guys saw in the last video. The 18 car currently pushing him to the front of the pack. But how long will the 8 car be able to stay out front before issues? The 18 car pushing, pushing, pushing on the 8 car. With his other Toyota teammates right behind him. Tyler Reddick going real out far in front. Using the power of Toyota and Daniel Suarez. But here comes the 9 car in the 47, bringing down Team Chevy on the low line. The only question is, is Tyler Reddick going to wreck with a flat tire? That will take out the entire field, and that will not be very good. Okay, this is something annoying with the NBC uh, Sports website. So when NASCAR goes NASCAR nonstop and they show the ad, they show the ad for a split second and then go back to these kinds of ads. Can you guys, like, keep the NASCAR nonstop going so I can see what the heck is going on because right now I have a camera on bubble walls and that's about it and I'm not even getting a NASCAR nonstop like everyone else is getting because I decided to Chromecast because I wanted the better quality and we are back 
Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., and Bubba Wallace all pushing past the eight car. And they're taking the lead. Six to go left in stage number two. Will it stay this way? Probably not. <laughs> Knowing Daytona, we I still have no idea who's going to win stage two. The 18's out front now, but the question is for how long. The eight car is going back. Doesn't seem like any problems yet. Ooh, after uh, NASCAR, there's going to be some IMSA racing today. Today is full of motorsports with F1, NASCAR, and IMSA today. The nine car pushing the eight. The eight car, Tyler Reddick has the lead. Denny Hamlin trying to help the 18 get back into the lead. Team Chevy Ford versus Team Toyota. And they're battling back and forth. Two to go. Kyle Busch currently leading. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, Bubba Wallace leaving the eight car out to dry. The eight car is going to file in behind the 22 and in front of the nine. But the nine is going to go down high because the eight is going a little bit slower than the uh, than the nine car. White line or white flag in stage number two. The high line is getting aggressive. Team Toyota battling against Team Chevy Ford. Oh, Joey Logano up high, the nine car chasing him up there. That's going to mess up Team Chevy Ford's line. Out comes Toyota. Oh, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin leaves Team Toyota to join Team Chevy Ford. But will that be a mistake for the 11? Will he not get the stage win? Here comes the 18 with the power of the 19 and 23. Both 19 and 23 need stage points. 19 needs stage points if he wants to make it in the playoffs. And Bubba Wallace needs a win if he wants to make it into the race. Coming to the line, and it's going to be a drag race, and it's going to be Kyle Busch will win stage number two. Ups, looks like Team Toyota's come down for four tires. Looks like we got some drivers from Team Chevy Ford also getting some fuel and maybe some tires as well. A lot of the cars in Team Chevy Ford got right sides, while Team Toyota just got fuel. So we could definitely see Team Toyota getting uh, four tires and, of course, more fuel to make to the end of the race. Here's the times for our three Toyota drivers. Denny Hamlin will be the first Toyota driver off pit road. Michael McDowell will make up 16 positions. I think he just got fuel. Yeah, no tires, probably just fuel. And here's how it stands up. And they're going to... We literally just came back for a commercial break, and it's only been 36 seconds. I've literally been recording ever since you guys came back from commercial break. What? That's... Uh, why? Possibly rain. In turn number three, we have some cars going back down pit road. 42, 78, 18, 4, all going down pit road. For fuel, it looks like I would have not pitted, especially if there's a if there's a high possibility of rain. But, uh, well, looks like we have one to go. So those four drivers, probably a terrible mistake, considering looking at these clouds, it's definitely going to rain. But, hey. You know, they're going to get four fresh tires, stuck full of fuel. So maybe if we do go all the way, they'll win on fuel strategy. We're not going to go all the way. I can tell you right now, we're not going to go all the way. It's going to be raining. And we're going to get a rain delay winner. Stage three starts. Green flag is back in the air with the 34 and Mike McDowell leading the race. Denny Hamlin in third. Joey Logano in second with a two of Austin Sindrick. He won a lap down. He's back on the lead lap. And he is now in third, fourth. Bubba Wallace in fifth. Martin Truex Jr., sixth. Seventh. Tyler Reddick is in sixth. Oh, Kyle Busch had a penalty. Too fast entering. That's what happened. So I thought there was a uh, strategy. There was a penalty. There's the 18 car making his way through the back of the field. Vibration for Denny Hamlin. Breaking news, vibration for Denny Hamlin. That cannot be good. We might see a tire flying here, boys. One, here's a big one. Caution is out. We have cars spinning everywhere. They're everywhere. They're through the grass. Into the Daytona Road Course bus stop. There's a 19 of Martin Truex Jr. He needed a win today to get into the playoffs. Huge wreck. We saw it happening, and here it is. The 19 trying to get out there as fast as he can. Here is what happened. There was a wreck in my last video. 
decided to save. The 34 got hit, went around, and there goes everyone else. The 18 who got a penalty just barely avoided that, but the 19 who needed this playoff win. Bam! The 8 car just hits the 34, Michael McDowell. Bam! 34 into... Oh, who was that? But it was a hard hit nonetheless. Cars spinning, smoke flying. Bam! Hit by the 8. Down he goes. Oh, into the 7 car. Hard hit into the 7. And everyone else just got collected up behind trying to check up. And 19, huge damage going through that grass there. Back green here at Daytona. 22 car, the 8 car, and the 47 and the 48 are your top four drivers. And they're going to be changing the top two positions back and forth between those guys. The 18 back into the 15th position after a penalty. Here are the drivers who need to win to get into the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. caught up in the wreck is not in the top 15. Bubba Wallace is currently in fourth right now. Sorry, fifth. Or the 48, giving a little bump to the 22, got him a little loose. You're going to see a lot more aggressive driving because not only is the race ending in 52 laps, but also... We have impending rain coming as well. That may or may not happen by the time that this race ends. So, uh, yeah, that could happen. So these guys are going to be a lot more aggressive. Everyone driving really aggressively right now. High chance of a wreck. Going into the outside, going into the inside, doing anything and everything. Trying to get positions as oncoming rain. Going down low, going down high, trying to start a new line. 46 left to go in the regular scheduled race. No one knows how many more laps until the rain may or may not fall. A commercial break, really? During the action, getting so pumped up? That is, that is really stupid, NBC. Y'all really need to chill on your commercial. I watched the F1 race earlier today, and there were absolutely no commercials. I made halfway through the race before NASCAR was supposed to start, and there were no commercials whatsoever. This is just terrible. Team Toyota trying to start a lane up from the bottom, but they've lost Martin Truex Jr. So, Team Toyota is now Team Toyota Chevy Ford, and then we also have Team Chevy Ford up on the high line. So, uh, we have all three manufacturers versus uh, Team America. So... Team 3 versus Team America. Who's going to win? And Chase Briscoe just made an incredible move. Camera zoom. Camera zoom. There we go. Just made an incredible move from... Oh, he wrecks! He wrecks! It's the big one yet again! Here's an even bigger one than the one last time. This collects the 14, the 48. The 23 of Bubba Wallace. He was doing so well today. This collects everyone and anyone. I'm glad I just randomly started recording then. Oh... The three car going backwards down pit road. Man just chilling, going backwards. Driver the 14 comes to that crumpled hinder tractor number 14 Ford Mustang. The 21 trying to gain re regain control. Here's what happens. Oh, I have done this so many times. Got into the 48, just a little loose, but bam, into everyone and away it goes. The 18 dodged that one way too well. Whoa, into the air. 23 had nowhere to go. 3 had nowhere to go. 48 as well. Literally everyone had nowhere to go. I think the 18 ducked down pit road when we saw that happening. And 3 goes down backwards. Here's part of the wreck. Part number 2. 48 bounced off. Or the 14 bounced off the 48. And almost went through the air. Thankfully that diffuser that they mentioned in the uh, NBC cutaway car was there. There's a little flap in the diffuser. It's kind of cool. Here's Bubba Wallace's view. Let's see what the 18 does. Because the 18 just, like, got out of there as soon as he saw that happening. Yeah, he went down low. And then, bam, just 23 had nowhere to go. He was just caught up in something. Threw the grass. Disappointing day for the 23 after he's done so well today. 14 makes a small mistake. I cannot tell you how many times I've done that as well. Just thought I had enough room. And then, bam. Yeah, the 18 just goes off down pit road. 
This one is definitely the big one for now. This took out a large majority of the field. I think I have enough time for at least one more. Yeah, they are. The 14 almost went up and over. Thank you, NASCAR Safety, for preventing it to do that. Thirty laps left to go. Rain coming in soon. Drivers are going to get real aggressive here, trying to win, trying to get into the playoffs, trying to secure their spot into the playoffs, getting points, getting all that they can. Oh, up high, Justin Haley trying to block the forty-three of Eric Jones. We somehow did not get a wreck out of that. And oh, well, the forty-three spins around the eighteen, barely avoids it. The twenty-two is hit. Oh my gosh, Caution is back out. I told you guys it's going to get real aggressive real fast, and look what just happened. 31 tried to, or was that the 43? Yeah, sorry, the 43 went up, tried to block 22, and just got spun around. Does not look like any damage, or too bad of damage to the two, but we are going to get another Caution and another restart, unless it starts pouring rain, which it could do. 22, stuck, doing some donuts. Jerry Logano is not your guys' winner, but he's doing some burnouts. The 22, not not winning, but uh, definitely doing some donuts like he did just win. I'm sorry, Joey, but uh, oh, those are not happy looking clouds. Look at those clouds, guys. We are getting rain now. Oh, that cloud looks angrier than the angriest of angries. Well, it looks like we're going to go green. No rain. So all the fans of... Basically evacuated. So, we're going to go back to green. Angry clouds flying over the track. Green flag is back out. Anyone has a chance to win. We're going to see some real aggressive driving here. 31, blocking the high lane. Trying to get the fast lane. Trying to stay up front. Look at those clouds. We could see another wreck here. Everyone trying to get so far up ahead. The 12 car trying to get in front of the 19 in points so he can get into the playoffs. Big push on the inside by team Toyota and Chevy. And just like that, my time has expired. We're going to see what happens next. Getting real aggressive. The 99, the 11, the 16, the 42. The 18 got pushed to the back. Because of the aggressive driving, everyone's trying to make it up front. There's only one spot for first place, though. There's not enough for all of you boys. Oh, rain on the camera. Oh, huge wreck! Huge wreck! The 18's involved. Everyone's involved. That's the ultimate big one. This is the big one. The entire field's involved. No one goes undamaged here. Huge wreck. Huge wreck. The three of Austin Dillon is the leader. He's the only one who made it. Austin Dillon is winning this. I don't care if it's not raining. I don't care. Everyone else is wrecked. Everyone's day is done. Austin Dillon is the winner of this race. Everyone has wrecked. That was the biggest one of ever. Austin Dillon has won here at Daytona. I know we have 23 to go. Austin Dillon has won here at Daytona. It's starting to rain heavily at Daytona. I was right. I knew I was right. The entire field wrecked. It doesn't matter. I I, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be because of rain, but you know what? Austin Dillon won. Austin Dillon is the only car that is, can go at full speed right now. Austin Dillon is the winner uh, here at Daytona. Here's what happened. We're hearing a lot of drivers talking about it was raining, wondering why they were driving. If it was actually raining, I am very angry with NASCAR. Because, oh, it was raining. The 42 just got loose out of nowhere. Or, sorry, the 99. The 47 climbed the wall. Here's what happened. It was definitely raining. NASCAR didn't do anything about it. Like NASCAR does. Because NASCAR does not care about their drivers whatsoever. They only care about chaos. And that's what they got. So, you guys are lucky that no one got hurt. You're welcome, NASCAR. You got Yeah, it's raining. You guys got your entertainment. Just be lucky that no driver got hurt. This is how you kill drivers, NASCAR. Way to go. The 47 went into the air. This is exactly how you kill drivers, NASCAR. But hey, you got that entertainment in. So I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, the cars just got loose out of nowhere. That does not happen at Daytona. NASCAR doesn't care about their drivers whatsoever. Here's the rain and here's your winner. Austin Dillon, after NASCAR really doesn't care about their drivers, did not 
They they knew that rain was coming. You saw it on the cameras as well. They could have called a caution. They didn't. And so Austin Dillon's your winner. Hope you guys are happy. Three car back in victory lane here at Daytona. Pouring down rain right now. Entertainment value, right guys? Yeah. Hopefully no one got a concussion. I can suspect that at least someone in the field probably got a concussion thanks to this. We love you, NASCAR. Do better at your job. Anyways, three car, Austin Dillon, your winner. Congratulations on making it through that wreck. I am going to whine and complain about NASCAR's terrible call on that because NASCAR doesn't know how to call when there's rain. Despite the fact that it can be literally pouring on track, they're like, huh, what? What's rain? They did it at New Hampshire and they'll do it again. Um, so yeah, anyways, Austin Dillon is your winner. Well deserved. Made it through that wreck somehow, some way. Didn't show up until the end, so very good job on trying to stay out of all that chaos, which he did. So congratulations to the winner, Austin Dillon. Okay, taking a deep, uh, brief moment to draw here. I do know that the rain shower popped out of nowhere, but we had drivers questioning why we were racing in the rain. So granted, my thing was probably blown way out of proportions. I'm not completely wrong. Uh, if we had drivers complaining, hey, why are we doing this? It's raining. We shouldn't be doing this. If we have officials at the edge end of the track that can literally stick out their hands and be like, huh, it's raining, then we should not be driving at a super speedway in the rain. We did this at New Hampshire. We tried it at New Hampshire. And guess what happened? Literally the first four cars went into the wall. So honestly, I think they need to be able to call that a lot sooner. I don't know if they have a delay on their radios that's like a minute long where they're like, huh, it's raining. And then they just wait until it starts pouring down rain to be like, and everyone wrecks to be like, oh, yeah, it's raining. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a radio call. But, yeah. So I get that the shower came out of nowhere, but I'm really disappointed that NASCAR just did not do anything sooner when drivers were literally complaining about it. Okay, so I didn't record this because I was paying attention, um, and I'm not going to go back because I don't want to mess it up again. But if you guys get the chance, try to find Justin Haley's interview at the end of the race because I agree with it wholeheartedly. It was raining hard into turn one. You could see it in the in cars. You can, I saw it on TV. I saw it on the TV camera. It, the track was wet. It had no grip. And NASCAR did nothing about it. And both Justin Haley and I are both frustrated with this. And Justin Haley was the one who was in the car and leading. He said that his spotter said that it was raining. And, well, when you're a race car driver, you have nothing to do except go fast. And, pray to God, you hope it sticks. And, uh, well, clearly it didn't. But, yeah. So I'm I'm not completely berserk here, believe it or not. This is probably the first time I'm not completely berserk, but I'm not completely berserk here. Track was wet. Officials did nothing about it. Entertainment value. I'm telling you. Entertainment value. Here's the in-car camera of Justin Haley's video. There you go. There you go. Looks dry. Looks dry. Oh, hold on, this is like a lap four. Here we go, maybe... Nope, it was turn one, it was turn one. Spider just said it started raining up here. They could have called a caution right here, right now, but they didn't. Spider mentioned that there's rain. There's the rain. There you go. Everyone just goes out. Everyone just goes out. The spider said that there was rain, and NASCAR did nothing about it. And that's exactly what happened. Good job, NASCAR. You really did good out there. You, you were not on top of the weather with any of your guys' spotters. The official driver's spotters were saying it's raining. Well before the start finish line. Justin Haley said right before the start finish line, it's raining. You guys could have called the caution right then and there. But no, you guys didn't do anything until everyone's almost killed each other because, haha, funny. We had spotters saying, oh, hey, it's raining. Be careful going into turn one. Well before the start finish line, when you guys could be like, oh, caution, caution, like immediately caution. You guys have called cautions really quick. For minor spins, so you guys could have definitely quickly hit that button and called a caution. But, nope, that's a lie. You guys didn't do anything until the car's wrecked. Alrighty, YouTube, you can call me a dum-dum. Here we are, 20 to go. 
Nice dry track. Doesn't look like we had any rain at all. <laughs> and we're gonna get going. I think I called Austin Dillon's win a little too early. Whoops. <laughs> 21 of Harrison Burton, that's not 21, but uh, his crash clock has ended, and the 42s, it's almost expired, but he should be able to make it off pit road, but the 21 is done. Here's a running lineup, literally anyone in this top 20 has a chance to win. I already made a bet with my friend that if Cody Ware wins, I'm getting a 1-24 to diecast of the race win. So, uh, Loki hoping he wins, but kind of sort of hoping he doesn't because I don't have the money for that. But you know what? I'll find the money for that if he does. So, uh, good luck, Cody Ware. But no, seriously, anyone who is on the lead lap right now has a chance. Even someone who's lapped down has a chance to win. If you're here, you have a chance to win. Welcome to Daytona. Here's what's left of the field with 16 laps left to go. Some of the fans made it back for the rest of this race. The green flag is back out with the 16 lap shootout. Who will win? It's anyone's guess. Don't forget the 20, shoot, was it the 2020 clash, I think? That we saw Eric Jones win in like a completely taped up car. Anyone has a chance. Martin Truex Jr. needs this win. He's tandem drafting with the two with Cendric. Making, going far away from the field, but for how long? The three car catching up to that two car tandem. Oh, two, three car. Sorry, trying to pass the 19 on the outside. Doesn't have, barely has some help. The two goes off the block. And I ran out of time. So you see, NASCAR, what happens is, is that when you don't call a caution for rain, that is completely obvious, you wreck out half the field. When you wreck out half the field, you get this boring single-file choo-choo train that goes across the track for 16 laps. And you don't get an entertaining finish like you hoped. So, watch us actually get an entertaining finish. That'll, that'll make me happy, but as of now, it's pretty meh. 41, hit the wall, blown tire, no caution. Oh, that is completely gone. I will be surprised if we don't get a caution. That car is traveling rather slowly and it's, blowing, it's going to start blowing debris everywhere. There's no way it makes it back without it yet. There it is, there we go. There's no caution, but there's the debris. Here's the top four drivers. Austin Dillon might try to pass the two eventually. Probably on the last lap, but who knows. Maybe, maybe not. And we don't have a caution yet, so I guess we're going to stay green. Cool. Oh, the two, he had a little bit of trouble. The three of Austin Dillon's currently leading the two. Rather slow on track. Got the bump from the three, I believe. And here comes the rest of the field. Here we go. Here's the replay. Three had a good run. Oh, bumped it to the two. Two went below the double yellow line. And just lost it. That's why there's a double yellow line rule, because it is hard to get grip down there. We have added more cars into this battle, and hey, maybe it won't be so boring after all. Martin Truex really likes this. White flag in the air. Austin Dillon is leading, but the question is, for how long? One lap to go at this large super speedway called Daytona. Drivers making moves left and right. Austin Dillon, Tyler Reddick, Cody Ware... How did he get up here? Nobody knows. Actually, I know the entire field got right, but that's not the point. The point is, down the back straightaway, the eight car chasing the three car, trying to catch up to him. The question is, will the eight car get to the bumper? It's close. I don't think he will. I don't think Ty Dillon will reach the eight. Or Sorry, I don't think the eight will reach Ty Dillon. Other way around. Martin Truex Jr. trying to get a point, and it's going to be Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon will win today's race at Daytona. This time, officially. Tyler Reddick in second. Sindrick in third. Castle, fourth. Gregson, fifth. McLeod, no, sorry. Cody Ware in sixth. And there's the three donuts. Yeah, look at all that smoke. That's so much smoke. That is so cool. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go, Dylan. You figured it out. You figured it out. Yeah, there you go. 
believe the last time I saw him win was here at Daytona back in 2018. The Daytona 500. Austin Dillon this time officially wins this crazy rain Daytona race. Congratulations to Austin Dillon for winning today's race. Martin Truex Jr. will not make the playoffs. Ryan Blaney makes it in today, but not Martin Truex Jr. Very disappointing day from the number 19 Bass Pro Shops Toyota. Sadly, was not able to make it into the playoffs today. But 2017 champ will be looking for uh, 2023. Maybe. We'll see how the rest of the season goes.